Next presentation and the last presentation in this session is about optimal blood pressure target in chronic kidney disease by Professor Mai Hasaballah from Cairo University. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organizing committee for uh, giving me the chance to share this prestigious conference with you and to meet with my dear professors, Professor Mohsen Ibrahim. And uh, we always like to have these crosstalks between neurologists and cardiologists. So uh, my talk today about optimal blood pressure target in CKD and um, speaking about non-dialysis CKD. So we'll speak quickly about the magnitude of the problem, pathogenesis of renal hypertension, treatment with emphasis on target blood pressure and ROS blockade. Uh, and while doing that, we'll be reviewing the guidelines. So of course you all know that hypertension affects one in three people in the United States, even two in three in Africa. It's the second leading cause of CKD in the world and is associated with 62% of strokes, 49% cardiovascular disease, and 7.5 million deaths. Uh, according to the US RDS, uh, uh, hypertension is the second cause uh, for end-stage renal disease. Whereas uh, in Egypt here, according to the Egyptian renal data system, hypertension is the first cause of uh, end-stage renal disease. And this has been found over the years in 2018 and 2020. And definitely we have a very strong relation between hypertension and CKD. We know that hypertension may cause CKD and that CKD may cause worsening of hypertension. And of course, you're all aware of this uh, KDGO guidelines on the prognosis of CKD, where uh, depending on the GFR and the proteinuria. So you have GFR from G1 to G5 and proteinuria A1, 2, and 3, uh, depending on the serum albumin uh, creatinine ratio less than 30 milligram per gram, 30 to 300 or more than 300. And you can see that uh, the lower the GFR and the greater the proteinuria, uh, we are in the red area where there is a great risk of a progression to end-stage renal disease. Like Dr. Gaman mentioned, uh, hypertension is present up to 85 to 95% of patients, stages three to five. So it's very prevalent and uh, the pathogenesis, there are many factors including the renal angiotensin system, uh, sodium and volume status, sympathetic nervous system and renal dopaminergic system oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction, not to mention gene genetic factors, but you can see that the renal angiotensin system is really affecting all other factors, and this just tells you how important this is. When you get malignant nephrosclerosis, we have intimal uh, uh, hyperplasia and hypertrophy, the human is reduced, we get onion skin appearance, fibrinoid necrosis in the arterioles, uh, cellular reactions and thrombosis ending with ischemia, and we end up with a glomerular tufts that is shrunken and glomerular sclerosis. And uh, uh, of course, the functioning nephrons will try to adapt for the lost nephrons by increasing pressures and flows. So there's going to be simulation of the uh, angiotensin II that's going to cause uh, more vasoconstriction, efferent vasoconstriction than the afferent. And this is going to increase the glomerular, intraglomerular pressure, causing increased proteinuria, which in itself is deleterious to the kidney. Also, angiotensin II stimulates the TGF beta, which plays a key role in extracellular matrix formation in the mesangium and interstitium, and this is going to lead to fibrosis and loss of nephron function, and you end up with tubular interstitial fibrosis and FSGS and stage renal disease. So the most important two questions we'd like to answer is, what is the target blood pressure in CKD patients with hypertension? And are RAS blockers integral in the treatment of hypertension in CKD? If you go back to the KDGO guidelines in 2012, the recommendation was uh, to reduce the blood pressure to 140 over 90 or less if proteinuria is less than 30 milligrams per 24 hours and to less than 30 over 80 if it's more than 30 uh, milligrams per 24 hours, and also it was recommended to start with ACE uh, or ARBIS uh, in patients with proteinuria more than 300 milligrams, it's a rating of 1B, and less proteinuria, it has a rating of 2D. 
Also, the European Society of Cardiology and of Hypertension, again, lowering systolic blood pressure to less than 140 millimeter mercury with overpotinuria less than 130 millimeter mercury and uh, RAS blockade are the ones to start with. So we're all speaking about 140 and 120 millimeter, 140 and 130 millimeter mercury. Now let's see what happened in the KDU guidelines 2021. The recommendation is to lower the blood pressure to less than 120 millimeter mercury using the standardized office blood pressure. But of course, we have to be less intensive in lowering blood pressure in patients with very limited life expectancy or symptomatic postural hypertension due to autonomic neuropathy. Uh, of course, you all you know about this, how, to, how to, uh, to measure the standardized with most important is preparation, with abstinence from coffee, exercise, smoking for more than 30 minutes, feet on floor, arms and back supported, keep quiet, relaxed for more than five minutes, correct calf size and position, validated equipment, not necessarily automated, and takes time to do that. And of course, many of the limitations of in office blood pressure are mitigated by 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure and home or self monitoring. Now, what about uh, the RAS blockade? You can see here the recommendation is to start angiotensin uh, system inhibitors in patients with or without diabetes when uh, and the uh, G1 to G4 stages G1 to G4 and proteinuria A3, which is more than 300 milligram, uh, uh, with a rating of 1B. And in proteinuria A2, in diabetes, it's also rating 1B. In non-diabetics, it has a rating of 2C. Uh, but it then says the practice point, it may be reasonable to treat people with high blood pressure and CKD even with no albuminuria with or without diabetes with RAS inhibitors. So again, there is inclination to use to start treatment with the RAS inhibitors. And definitely we have to monitor for changes in blood pressure, serum creatinine and serum potassium within two to four weeks of initiation or increase in the dose of ACA inhibitors or ARBs. We reduce or discontinue RAS blockers in the setting of symptomatic hypertension, uncontrolled hyperkalemia despite medical treatment, and while preparing for imminent renal replacement therapy. And another point, a practical point, we should administer a RAS blockade using the maximally recommended dose as possible because these are the doses that prove to be of benefit. And you can see here that uh, mortality is reduced using the maximum dose, which appears in green, as compared to the sub-maximum doses in blue, and discontinuing uh, the RAS blockade. Also, there is a recommendation of avoiding any combination of AC inhibitors, ARBs, and direct renal inhibitors therapy in patients with and without diabetes. So the question is, why were the key legal guideline recommendations of the target blood pressure reduced from isostolic blood pressure of 140 or 130 to less than 120? And the reason for that is the SPRINT study, systolic blood pressure intervention trial, and large meta-analyses in CKD and non-CKD patients. So this is a network meta-analysis on the effects of systolic blood pressure reduction on the major cardiovascular events. 42 randomized controlled trials, including more than 144,000 patients from the general population. And you can see here that uh, Reduction to 120 to 124, this is the achieved systolic blood pressure. It was not less than 120, but it was 120 to 124, and it indicates that it was in favor of low blood pressure concerning the major cardiovascular events. And this uh, 18 randomized control studies was done on patients, uh, on the risk of mortality in CKD patients. And again, uh, if you look to the achieved systolic blood pressure, it was the lowest was less than 125, and again, it indicates that the lower seems to be better. Uh, there was heterogeneity in the intensity of blood pressure lowering, and the mean achieved systolic blood pressure was 132 millimeter mercury. So the SPRINT study uh, comparing blood pressure less than 120 as versus less than 140 to try and find out, find out the most appropriate targets for systolic blood pressure to reduce the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality in persons without diabetes. So we're speaking about cardiovascular morbidity and mortality and in patients without diabetes. There was a 25% reduction, reduction 
and the primary outcome, which is the uh, uh, myocardial infarction, uh, acute coronary syndrome, strokes, congestive heart failure, cardiovascular uh, deaths. Uh, and uh, there was also similar results in all-cause mortality, and uh, also similar results in the CKD group. Uh, even when stratified for age, it was found that seniors more than 75 years uh, had no uh, severe uh, side effects concerning postural hypertension and injurious falls. And because uh, there was a um, significant improvement as regards the primary outcome and uh, all-cause heart failure, comparing the intensive to the standard uh, policy, this intervention was stopped early after a median follow-up 3.26 years. Also, in this study, there was no difference in the GFR. Uh, comparing the intensive uh, to the standard protocol. There was some decrease in proteinuria in the intensive form, but again, we're not sure if this less albuminuria will translate into long-term benefit in the GFR. There was also improvement in the cognitive functions, the probable dementia, and the composite of probable dementia or mild cognitive impairment. But again, this is an important alert. The SPRINT is not a typical CKD study. Uh, the mean GFR was 47.9 in both the standard and the intensive group, and it is excluded diabetic patients, which is the most common cause of end-stage renal disease, excluding polycystic kidney disease, patients with GFR less than 20, more than one gram proteinuria per 24 hours, glomerulonephritis treated with immunosuppressive therapy, and organ transplant patients. All these groups of CKD patients were excluded. So the reasons for reducing the target blood pressure was mainly based on its cardioprotective survival and potential cognitive benefits. Whereas there are no new data supporting the kidney protective benefits of targeting a systolic blood pressure less than 120 millimeter mercury, but somewhat more convincing for CKD patients with proteinuria and long-term follow-up. Also the groups of patients with diabetes, advanced CKD, stages four and five, the very low blood pressure and extremes of age, they need to have randomized controlled studies done in order to come up with a definite conclusion. So individualization is the key. And just to make things more complicated, if you look at the European Society of Cardiology 2018, uh, they uh, put the targets, blood pressure, to be to target to 130, but not less than 120. And in CKD in particular, to target it to less than 140 to 130, if tolerated. So it does not speak about less than 120. And uh, those uh, elderly patients, it's less than 140 to 130 with a diastolic blood pressure between 80 and 70. And again, uh, this is because there are many studies uh, indicating that aggressive blood pressure uh, reduction may increase the risk of cardiovascular events. So this is completely different to what we've heard about in the uh, SPRINT study. So in conclusion, it's not a matter of 130 over 80 or 140 over 90 or less than 120. The thing is individualization. So blood pressure goals should be individualized according to the clinical judgment, weighing the risk and benefits for each patient and considering that one size does not fit all. And RAS blockade is pivotal in the treatment of CKD in all stages. And with the new potassium lowering drugs, it is possible to continue RAS blockade in the face of emerging hyperkalemia and hence do not deprive the patients their beneficial effects. And nephrologists should take the rightful lead in hypertension research and clinical care. Determining the optimal blood pressure targets for all patients with CKD will likely take one to two decades of effort. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. This was very, very informative. Uh, we as cardiologists uh, see many patients with kidney disease. So your information was very helpful. And uh, it seems that uh, with these guidelines, we have to be wise regarding the reduction in blood pressure. Too much lowering and aggressive lowering of the blood pressure is not recommended. 
and also uh, there is increasing importance of the RAS blockers in the treatment and the management of these patients. Uh, I'm not sure if you refer to the role of diet in your presentation. Uh, does the dietary changes, dietary control play a role in the management Definitely, of these patients? Yes, yes. Uh, salt restriction is very important, of course. And uh, any hypertensive, not just CKD patients. So, What about protein limitation? Uh, again, for CKD patients, we reduce protein intake. Yeah. What about uh, supplementation with vitamin D? Vitamin, vitamin D? D, D. D. E? D. 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 Yeah. For control of blood pressure? No, for this type of patients. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we always... Uh, patients with chronic renal failure. Yes. We, we always, we, we have to measure vitamin D whenever we have uh, hypocalcemia. And we have to start by giving the native vitamin D, not the activated form. For those patients. Excellent presentation, Dr. Amai. We know from renal vascular uh, hypertension a very terrifying condition called blood pressure creatine spiral phenomena. If we escalate antihypertensive, creatinine increase. If creatinine increase, blood pressure increase. If we escalate antihypertensive again, uh, creatinine increase. We can uh, take this phenomena for uh, uh, re uh, kidney uh, uh, renal hypertension and we must be guided by creatinine if we lower blood pressure as we do with renal vascular hypertension. Because, yeah, uh, my question, creatinine we be my, my monitor for intensifying the treatment or I will ignore? Uh, when we improve the blood pressure, you expect the creatinine to improve in the long term, in the long run. But uh, in case that we use a RAS blockade, we have to monitor serum creatinine because uh, we do not allow uh, more than uh, one third <laughs> of the baseline serum creatinine to, we accept up to one third rise in serum creatinine using the RAS blockade, but we don't accept more than that. So if uh, the blood, uh, the serum creatinine goes uh, higher, we will have to uh, to reduce the dose of uh, the RAS blockade. But generally speaking, improving hypertension will improve the kidney functions in the long term. <clears throat> Professor Fadhi, okay, uh, Doctor May, uh, I have a small comment and a question as well. As a small comment, uh, why in Egypt the hypertension is the most leading cause of chronic kidney disease, not diabetes as the rest of the world? This is the small comment. The question is now, what is the role of mineraloreceptor uh, antagonist in the management of resistant hypertension? And hypertension has a role now, important, and also has a beneficial effect on the kidney. Uh, we have uh, some more studies that uh, have been published uh, recently. Fidelio study and Fidelity study and Figaro study have shown uh, that the use of uh, this uh, mineral corticoid receptor antagonist have an important beneficial effect, uh, not only on the hypertension, but also in the chronic kidney disease. Thank, Thank you very much for the very two important questions. Uh, the first question, why do we have hypertension as a first leading cause, uh, in con diabetes comes second, and the rest of the world, diabetes comes first. Uh, there is a possibility that we are over-diagnosing hypertension. Because uh, to say that hypertension is the cause, the patient should have had this hypertension uh, long ago, before the development of CTD, and uh, with organ uh, affection, uh, maybe, uh, we know that when they present at a late stage, most of the patients are hypertensive. So this could be an overdiagnosis, and this is a possibility. And also for the diabetes, it's another possibility that patients uh, could die before reaching uh, end stage renal disease because we don't have uh, early referral. Uh, unfortunately, the patients are not referred early enough. This is for the first question. 
the second question, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, mineralocorticoid inhibitor is a very important, this is one of the pillars, and uh, just like Professor Gemma mentioned, we are not waiting for resistant hypertension to use them. They, are, they have antifibrotic properties and they need to be given from the very early on. So this is one of the pillars that should be used, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor May. Very excellent presentation. And this, by this, we end this session and we invite the next session chairpersons to talk.